In this video, we're going to explore how to combine the CSV file in Chart.js. So what we have so far, and it was from our previous video, we had all the values here, we created this, we combined it, while we were able to extract this. So what we want to do now is we want to combine this and start working with Chart.js to add that in our entire structure. So to do this, all we need to do is we need to continue on with creating a chart. So the first thing what I want to do here is I want to create a chart here. So I'm going to grab this, go to chartjs.org, and I'm using the latest version as of now, which is 3.4. Click on this. And then what we're going to do in here is I'm just going to put it here down. It's going to create here. Just paste this in here, and I'm going to remove this. I guess there's an extra script tag here that's not necessary. Then I'm going to cut this out, push this up, and we can put it here above. What I want to do here, of course, is to put in here a div. And this div is to ensure that uh, we have a width, there is a class and a chart box. And there we are. Once we have this, remove this here, and then after we we'll use some CSS as well. And in here, we do the following. We'll say here, style, and in the style here, we will say the chart box class with we will set the width on 700 pixels that will be more than sufficient save this and once we did this we have to make sure we still download it or sorry we get the script of chart.js so we go here to getting started and select here on getting started sub menu you can see here this link here grab this copy and paste this here all right so now we have this, save this, so we can see here, refresh, now we have everything here working. So what I would like to do now is basically the next one, and that is uh, put this in a proper structure. So I'm going to give it a proper structure before we even continue on. So we say here the setup block. We say here the config block. And we have here finally is the uh, render or initialize block. So in it, render block so in here basics which is all the data points here so we're going to grab everything here between the data because that's the one that's important and then we say here the following we say here data or sorry constant data equal curly braces semicolon here and it says uh, or paste everything here between all right so once we've got this we have done one part the next part is the configuration block where we cover the config and we have to just double check here. Sometimes it can be a conflict if we have any other config here. No, nope, there's none here, so that's fine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cut this out, put it in the configuration, put here constant, and this constant will have the name config equal curly braces. You know, let's put it here, enter, curly braces. All right. What I, want, what I want to do is I want to remove the data here and just put in here data comma. Why? The data here is directly matches this. So once I have this, the next thing what I want to do is I want to initialize it or render the, the chart. So the first time rendering of, or the first time rendering a chart is basically initialization of the chart. So what we say here is the following. We'll say a constant my chart. And in here, we say equal. And then we say here new to create a constructor, and this constructor is called chart. And then we have your parentheses, make sure it's parentheses and not curly uh, braces, very important, because normally we have curly braces here above, but for the object of a constructor, we don't have curly braces, we have a parentheses. And in here, very straightforward, we're going to grab this part here, cut it out, paste here, all right, then comma, and then we say config. And the reason why we're doing this is basically this here, the get context is already given because Chart.js has created intelligent details so it understands this part already without repeating itself because this is related to draw something in a canvas. So delete all of this here, save this and see if we have a chart. There we are. So we have a chart here. Now what we want to do is we have this chart here and what I want to do is I want to uh, upload a new file and get that file, put it in here. But if we just now upload, you will see nothing happens, of course, because we didn't connect anything. So you click your upload, nothing happens. We have all of this, beautiful, but here we cannot connect that. To do this, we're going to use here the 
uh, update function. But what we have to do here first is two things. We're going to create a function, and then we're going to create a button that triggers the function and updates once we have selected a certain value. All right. So we're going to do the following. We say here function, and then we say here update chart. And here we can say here, um, you could select anything, it doesn't matter right now, I just leave it for now. And all I want is do the following. I want to grab basically one of these and put it in here. So all we will do is, here we're going to grab the data sets and then we say the data here, we're going to pinpoint this. To pinpoint this, because we have now a slightly different structure, don't get confused, it's basically the same. Get the my chart. You say dot. Okay, where does this my chart will lead? Well, it leads to the config, but if you check in the config, config is basically just this text here, and then eventually you discover it goes to data, all right? So then it's in the data, and in the data, we have the data sets, and then we have the data. So it's data, data sets, and then data again, data sets. This is data set zero because it's only index, it's indexable, plus it's only, there's only one data set available. So that's the first one. So we say this, and then this equals, what does it equal? Well, if you remember what we did here, you can just grab this here. Revenue data, basically, all of these constants here. These constants are outside here, meaning that everywhere we can use these constants. So I'm going to grab one of these constants, the revenue data. There we are. Or we could do as well, I just realized we could maybe even make it uh, nicer by putting a label here. And this label will be whatever the uh, value we have. So once we did this, all right, let's do this. Right now it will not work, of course, but we need to put in buttons. So I'm going to create here a new button. So to do this, a horizontal line, just to indicate there is a difference. If I save this now, and I create three specific buttons. And one will be, and depending on whatever the name is, so let's say here, first of all, we have the ID here. Well, we can remove all the IDs here. I only want here. The function trigger on on click. So we say here on click equals, and then we're going to look what's the function name. So what is the function name? The function name is called update chart, and then we have the parameter is the label. So we're going to grab the label here, and I will make the labels this here, so that once it loops through it, it will understand that we get this constant once we click on it without using three different data or three lines of code. So this is just a shorthand to write it in a more efficient way. So we say you update chart, and in here, we're going to copy this revenue data. Uh, all right, so we have this one. So I'm going to do now, it's going to copy this, paste here, paste here. And I say cost data, and finally is the profit data. So basically I want to grab the item itself. So this is a profit, uh, profit data, this is the cost data and finally we have the revenue data save this go back here refresh now we have this we have three lines here on there but if i press, press now something nothing happens here why there is no value absolutely nothing matching so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to select this open up this file upload the file now we get this all right so 12 9 things Etc. Etc. Of course, because we only have six labels here, I didn't add up extra labels. So now, if I change and update this, oh, it does not respond. Let's see why it doesn't respond. So let's double check here. Do we have a console.log? Just to make sure. Are we? Is it working as when I expected? Oh, of course. I realized what I forgot here. It is my chart dot update we want to update of course the values here semicolon here would be nicer save this again i think now it just works perfectly if i select the file put it in here upload the file there we are let me say here revenue all right uh revenue data all right that doesn't work and this as well so this sadly enough does not work okay so what we can do is slightly different we have this profit data, revenue data. So we can do the following. I'll just put in here an if statement because apparently it doesn't grab the constant value, which is a pity. I was hoping for that. So we say here, if 
when we create an if statement and this if statement will help us to filter out what type of label this and it will show us the matching data because i don't want to have three different functions i just want to use the labels as well so if label strong equals then here revenue let's see where is that revenue data and did i also match it here above revenue data yes so everything there was correct so sadly just doesn't pick it up equals revenue data in that case my chart will be revenue data constant basically here i'm going to do one more if and another one this will be if it's cost then it will be cost and finally if this is a profit then we have the profit so save this here now if i refresh i would expect it now to work as i hope so then there you are and then we press this there you are so of course so the reason why it didn't work just is it doesn't see the string here as a constant uh, or variable because we assign this here so that might be something that we'll figure out eventually how we could just do it immediately so it would save us almost five lines of code or even more so we could just remove all of this just to make it one single line here however this is basically the way to do it and now you can see here you can adjust this and if you're not satisfied with this here we can change this as well we could say here all we need to do is here to figure out whether we want to adjust this is basically this one here the label how do you get the label well we go in the data sets and then the label so what we could do here for the label i guess that's the easiest one because label is by default a string so this label and i'm not do not get confused with this label because i'm referring to here this part here I want to remove this and override it with whatever we had there selected. So if I save this, this will automatically work, but this one will get the constant matching. Save this, refresh, pay attention here once we upload. Select this, all right. Press upload, now it, now it works here. And then we say here revenue, all right, revenue data, cost data, and finally we have the profit data here. And of course, you could go very deep with colors, etc., etc. But this is the core where you can combine the chart with a, a CSV file. And using Papa Parse is a quite powerful one. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.